In this problem, we're going to look at an application of the intermediate value theorem to show the existence of a solution to an equation. So the question is, use the intermediate value theorem to show that the equation e to the x equals 2 cosine x has at least one positive solution. Here are the graphs of e to the x and 2 cosine x. Here's the graph of e to the x. Here's the graph of 2 cosine x, which of course is just like cosine x, except it's twice as big. And we're looking for a place where these two are equal for some positive value c. There are of course many other places where the two graphs will uh, meet for negative values, but we're looking for this a positive value that we can see on the graph. Now I remind you about the intermediate value theorem. Here's the statement. Suppose that f is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. If z lies between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one real number c in the interval a, b, such that f of c equals z. Okay, so how are we going to apply the intermediate value theorem to solve this problem? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a relevant function, f, which encodes both of these two functions that we have here. So we're going to set f of x equal to the difference between e to the x and 2 cosine x. So now instead of looking for a solution to this, we're looking for a place where f is 0. All right, now we have to choose uh, an interval. Well, consider perhaps the interval 0, 1. We're going to choose this interval because if we calculate f of 0, that's equal to e to the 0 minus 2 cosine of 0. So that's equal to negative 1. And we also look at f of 1. Well, that's going to be e to the 1 minus 2 cosine of 1. Well, e is a roughly about 2.7. And minus 2 cosine 1, whatever it is, is at most minus 2. So this is going to be positive. In fact, it's about 1.6377. So this is a very good interval because f at 0 is negative and f of 1 is positive. So the intermediate value theorem, the intermediate value theorem, we conclude that there is a number c in 0, 1 such that f of c equals 0. So because the value is 0, which is playing the role of z here, is between f of a and f of b, in other words, between f of 0 and f of 1, then there's some value c in the interval 0, 1 for which f of c equals 0. Now this kind of argument actually goes back to the founder of the decimal uh, number system, which was someone called Simon Steven in the 16th century. And he actually outlined a argument for why the intermediate value theorem works. And so I'd like to go a little bit uh, further and actually show you why the intermediate value theorem works and how we would more precisely find this uh, kind of value C that the theorem is claiming exists. So to actually find a more accurate value for C, let's say we actually want to know approximately what this value C is, we can proceed as Steven did by an idea of successively dividing the interval that we have into two. So the idea is that if we look at the interval that we're talking about, which is if I blow it up uh, 0 to 1, we know that the function's value at 0 happens to be negative. And we know that the function's value at 1 happens to be positive. So 
So we know that there's a zero somewhere in this interval. And Stebbins' idea was, well, let's divide the interval into two. There's the midpoint, 0.5. So if we calculate the function's value at a 0.5, well, we get approximately minus 0.1064. So this function f has a negative value at 0.5. So now we have a little bit more information. Now we know that the function is actually negative at this point and positive at this point. So now we can deduce that there must be a value somewhere in this smaller interval where the function is actually zero. So then Stebbins said, all right, let's subdivide this interval now into two, midpoint being 0.75, and calculate f at 0.75. And that's approximately 0.6. 536, which is a positive value, allowing us to deduce that now there must be a zero somewhere between 0.5 and 0.75. And then to successively get at that, we would take the midpoint of that, which is 0.625, and calculate f at 0.625, and that is roughly 0.2463 which is again positive. So by iterating this procedure, we can narrow down the range of values where the zero is located, and eventually we can approximate the, uh, get closer and closer to the actual value uh, of C, which is uh, roughly 0.5397857. etc., etc somewhere uh, in there. Okay. So it's actually an infinite process required to actually obtain this idealized real number, which is the solution of the original equation.